Well, greetings once again. This is Sam in Wyoming. Today I'm going to turn a cherry box that has been stabilized. I have a couple stabilized box blanks that I'm going to use for this video. And you're looking at part of my vacuum system. Today I'm not going to get into that too much, maybe just a little bit. I'll show you my setup here in just a second. But today I'm going to focus on chasing threads in stabilized wood. In the past few months, I've set up a vacuum chamber for stabilizing and also a pressure pot for casting. And you've seen some of those videos, perhaps. Now I will show you my setup for stabilizing and go into a lot more detail in the future on stabilizing and that process. But for today, I'm going to focus on chasing threads in stabilized wood. Now starting at the very bottom of my vacuum chamber, I've got a wooden plug siliconed into the bottom of this Schedule 40 PVC pipe. On the way up, I've got polycarbonate with some plumbing fittings set into the top of my lid. Now here's a little bit more detail on my plumbing with my vacuum gauge and right here is a union. And this allows me to take this apart and put it back together very quickly and accurately. Now as I move forward with this video and this project, I think it's important that I define a couple terms. We see cast resin objects like pen blanks and maybe knife scales and we can buy those already cast with a little bit of color in them. Stabilizing wood is a little bit different. It's done with the vacuum chamber. And I'll get into that later on in another video. But basically, stabilizing wood is taking wood that may be a little bit porous or even punky and making it harder. So during the stabilizing process, we're taking air from the wood and replacing it with a chemical. And I've read some definitions of stabilizing wood where the wood becomes plastic. Well, that may be partly true, but what it does is it makes it harder. It makes it more possible to turn that wood where it, as before it was very punky or maybe porous. Now, in today's video, I'm going to chase threads in this. And I showed you this box earlier in the video and I'm very happy with the threads. So for me, the possibilities are endless. I can take any wood that ordinarily would not be a good wood for chasing threads, and I can put threads in them. So let me readjust my camera, and we'll start doing a little bit of turning. All right, so I have both halves of my box. This wood has been, first of all, rough turned and dried. It's been sitting around maybe for a year, so it's plenty dry, and that's an important aspect of stabilizing. Before you enter into the stabilizing process, that wood has to be dry or you're gonna have problems. So it's rough turned, it's ready to go. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna true up the, the spigots on the bottom. This is the top of my box. So I'm gonna put this in my long nose jaws, get that in there. Now I think it's important to wear a face shield because you never know what's going to happen. So in the next couple of clips, I'm going to take an English bedan and form my tenon. And I'm going to complete this spigot with my point tool which I think is a really good tool for this sort of detail. And it's almost exactly the right angle for forming this spigot. So right now I'm working on the spigot on the bottom of my base 
And as this is pretty much the same operation I did on the lid, I'm going to just cut a lot of this out. Okay, so I've established a tenon or a spigot on the top of my box and the base of my box. Now I've got some long nose jaws in my Vicmark chuck here, and I like these a lot because I can go down to a fairly narrow spigot. Now I'm going to show you some of the high points of this process. You don't need to watch what I've already done many, many times in other videos. So I'm going to true this up, true up the inside, and chase some threads. So I'm taking a spindle gouge and just leveling off the surface. And in the next couple clips, I'm going to take different tools and clean up the face of that opening. Here I'm using my English bedan to do that. So as I prepare my lid for chasing threads, that is a critical operation. Here I'm cleaning up the inside of my lid with a traditional scraper. Now you can't see a lot of that because my big clunky hand is in the way. Then I'll do a little bit of sanding and apply some friction polish and that wood is absolutely gorgeous. Now keep in mind that's cherry and I do have a little bit of coloring in that from the stabilizing process. Right there I'm going to take my Robert Sorby texturing tool and put a little uh, detail in the inside of my lid. Now this is a fairly good view of texturing the inside of my lid. I'm using the Robert Sorby texturing tool, which is really one of my favorites. Sorry about the hand. And the next step right now is to just kind of clean that out a little bit. Get all the dust out of those grooves. Now I'm using my toothbrush. And that's a pretty good tool for this operation. One of the things I'll do next is add a little color to that. And I think it's important to add the color right now. Later on I'll put a friction polish on top of that and just dab it on there. Because otherwise you'll just sort of erase all the color you put on. And I like that because it really highlights the, the texture. And I should make the point that right now it's very important to finish the inside of that lid before I do any thread chasing on it. So it's completely finished except for the thread chasing and we'll pick up that in just a bit. Now I'm preparing to chase my female thread by first establishing a recess at the end of the threaded area. The next thing I need to do, and I will take my point tool, is establish a chamfer at the beginning of my thread right here. And that's very important when you're starting the thread. It makes it easier to begin your thread. Now with my armrest tool extended over the regular tool rest, I'll begin my thread. And it's important to start that thread on about the second tooth back. It just makes it a little bit easier. And if you are interested in thread chasing with these kind of hand tools, I have many videos in a playlist of nearly 30 thread chasing videos. And that's a pretty good angle there to see this operation. What you maybe can't see is my left hand pulling the armrest tool and the thread chaser into that female recess. I'm not pushing with my right hand. That is not the proper way to do it. That does not determine 
the speed of your traverse. It's simply the groove that you've already created in that thread. Well, I think you get the idea by now. So let's speed this up and move on to the next step. Now what I did earlier was I applied a little bit of mineral oil and that just uh, lubricates those threads and there's a good shot. I'm very happy with chasing threads in black cherry. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, now I've got the base of my box chucked up into my lathe. There's the lid. And I'm just right in the ballpark. I'm right uh, where I need to be as far as the diameter of this for chasing the male threads. Okay, now I've just got a couple little operations to perform here before I can chase my thread. I'm going to clean up this shoulder. I'm going to create a chamfer on the beginning of my thread and right back here I'll uh, create a little recess. so I'll slow my lathe speed down to around 300 RPM. So I'm going to start out about 45 degrees. Now I'm going to start on about the second tooth back and really establish a good thread right on that chamfer. So what I'm aiming for is that groove to actually do the chasing for me. So all I'm doing is pushing my thread chaser into that groove just a little bit. And now I'm going to start turning the corner. Now as I continue to chase the male thread on this box, I'm going to show you a different angle. And you'll notice that the thread is a little bit... Uh, wet. And what I did was I put some mineral oil on the threads again to lubricate them. It just makes the threading operation go a little bit smoother. Here I'm testing that and as I put my lid on the base I'm going to discover that I get really lucky. It fits on there perfectly. This doesn't happen very often. Okay now this is a good opportunity to show you how I match up the grain alignment on this. So right here is a little bark inclusion or something. So I have to go from there to there. And actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to true this up. My threads are okay. They, they go on there pretty well, but I just have a little ways to go. And if I true this up, and mess around with that, they may match up pretty well. I'm going to do that first. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to true up the top of this. I'm going to just take that old spigot off there. And you can see I'm getting a little closer. So I don't want to fine tune that right now because as I turn that, that's going to tighten that up. Okay, now, let me take this lid off here. I'm going to inspect my, my threads, and really they are, they're fine. I put my lid back on. And see how close I am? I have the lid profiled, sanded, textured, and a little finish on there. A little bit of texture on the very top of that. 
My grain lines up very nicely. I have the inside of my box sanded and finished and now I just have to finish the very bottom of that and I'll be done. Well here's my little cherry box stabilized and all finished. I'm very happy with that. I'm happy with the threads and the possibilities of chasing threads in softer wood. So let me give you some close-ups of this and uh, we'll end there. Thank you very much for watching.